how to watch the pros. I love this as a parallel to, I would say, how to listen to the pros. <laughs> It's an infectious, joyful, it's just incredible. I love Cannonball Adderley's feel. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I got a plant, finally. Now the question is, will I be able to care for it? Like, over time, obviously, I'm caring for it right now. I've named him George. I think that will do it for now. I was practicing some stuff yesterday, working on a few different, there's a few different songs I'm learning and solos I'm learning. I like to rotate different things around. And then last night I was reading a little bit of this, uh, the inner game of tennis, which I've been slowly making my way through for a while. I need to just go ahead and finish it. There's a chapter in here, how to watch the pros. And I love this as a parallel to, I would say, how to listen to the pros. I'm super, super big into transcribing as a process that I've learned so much from and continue to always do as a, a way to develop my ear and my feel and so much. Almost least of all for me, the process of transcribing has to do with accumulating vocabulary. And I'm gonna play an example for this little Cannonball Adderley clip that I was working on that I feel like ties in so nicely with this. So I'll show you what I was, actually I'll show you what I was doing with it and then I'll read the, the inner game of tennis part. But because this is kind of like what I'm doing when I'm transcribing just about anything. Man, this Cannonball, it's it's Cannonball playing Au Pervave, the Charlie Parker Blues, which I was investigating different versions because when I listened to Bird play it, of course, I checked the Omni book and the Real book, both of which have at least three wrong notes in the melody. So I wanted to learn it the way that, that Bird actually plays it. And Cannonball plays it 99% the same as Bird. There's one note that he plays different. Anyway, so this Cannonball version, which by the way, I'm checking it out up a half step, because why not? So, this is a little bit of his solo. Ah! And it goes on and I do the same thing with all of it, but it's for me, it's the repeating of it over and over and over to get that feel. At least at the first layer, that's what I'm focusing on more so than the vocabulary. I'm definitely not thinking in terms of like flat nines and thirds and sharp 11s. I'm not thinking that yet, although I probably will get to that because after I really get it in there, it's like, hmm, what are those things that you know sound so good? But I've always been such a fan of players whose playing feels really great to me, rhythmically. Cannonball, you know, being up at the top of that list. I mean, Cannonball's feel is just, it's, it's, um, it's an infectious, joyful, I, I mean, it's just incredible. I love Cannonball Adderley's feel. I mean, I don't know what else to say. So let me read the thing from the inner game of tennis about how to watch the pros. When I was a child, I used to play touch football and I noticed that I played quite a lot better when I'd just come home after my dad had taken me to the San Francisco 49ers. I hadn't studied the passing technique of Frankie Albert, but I had picked up something and it made a difference when I played. Although it's obvious that we can learn a great deal by watching better players play tennis, I mean, just substitute, listen to better players play jazz. We have to learn how to watch, learn how to listen. The best method is simply to watch without assuming 
that how the pro swings is how you should be swinging. So I interpret that as like, you know, you're listening. It doesn't mean that the way that any particular player plays is the way that you should be playing. You're just absorbing what somebody has found to be really useful for themselves. I mean, later on down here, he says, in summary, I believe someone who has discovered his or her best stroke can help you discover your best stroke. So again, we're substituting, mixing metaphors or here between tennis and, and playing. Instead, allow yourself to focus on whatever most interests you about the movements of the pro you're listening to. Allow yourself to focus on what Allow yourself to focus on whatever most interests you. Allow the natural learning process to lead you. Allow self two to play around. Okay, that's, in this book, he's talking a lot about self one and self two, sort of like our inner critic, inner judgmental voice. In learning how to learn by listening to pros play, you may want to alternate between external observation and experimentation on the court. So this is really cool. To me, this is like, I'll sit here and play along with a piece, just a little piece of a cannonball solo like this. And then when I go to play, I'll, I'll start to veer away from it. Maybe I'll, I'll be playing alongside him and then I'll just start to kind of play my own thing, but with that same bounce, with that same feel. <laughs> It's a little bit tricky because I have it on a tight loop. So maybe a, the way that I would do this more tactically would be to have a full chorus that I could play around and so I could do that. But after a while of just playing along with this section of Cannonball, and I think there's another section too. <laughs> So I guess what I'm saying there is I'm concerned less about the harmony and the theory. I know it's over a blues. I can dig into that next, but the most important thing to me is the feel, the delivery, the sort of this kind of latching on to that cannonball swagger as best I can. And the way he's leaning into notes with air and sort of like dynamics and that's, all of that intangible stuff is so, so interesting to me. And I just, I think much like, um, like he's talking about in the inner game of, uh, game of tennis, just allow yourself to focus on whatever most interests you about the movements of the pro you are listening to. That's my takeaway. And something I just always have found to be so valuable with this. And you know, that is exactly the kind of stuff that you cannot get from reading music on paper. I don't care how accurate the the thing you're reading is, you'll never pick it up. And most of the time, it, it just can't be captured on paper. You gotta get it with your ear. You gotta get it with your heart and soul. You know, I don't wanna get all woo-woo on you, but I mean, that's kind of what, that's what's going on. And so anyway, I just, I've been having fun with this, just this little bit of cannonball. Have fun uh, with whatever it is you're transcribing. By the way, I'm gonna be on tour in Europe this fall for about two months, two and a half weeks or so with my band and the rest with Snarky Puppy. Tour dates are all up on my website, bobreynoldsmusic.com. Love to see you at one of the shows. Thank <laughs> you.